Now let's talk about igneous composition and the stuff that makes up these rocks. So if we're talking about igneous rocks, it's like 99% uh, silicates. Sometimes there's other stuff thrown in like magnetite or some weird eruptions are made of carbon carbonate minerals, but that's very, very rare. For the most part, these are silicate minerals. We've talked about the composition and what that means. That's the stuff. What it's made of. The minerals that make it up, or we can talk about felsic intermediate mafic. Although that refers to the minerals, it also refers to the content of those minerals, this being, remember, magnesium and iron, low in silica, felsic, lots of silica, lower iron and magnesium. We can't observe the iron and magnesium directly unless we're using sensitive equipment like X-ray fluorescence. So instead, we make other observations of things like the color. And that observation, we interpret the composition. Observation, color, interpretation, content. If it is an intrusive rock, we can sometimes observe the individual mineral grains, or orthoclase there, or quartz there. Another name for orthoclase is potassium feldspar or caspar. Sodium plagioclase is in here. Mica's hornblende, amphibole type of hornblende. Those are all found in felsic rocks. Most of those minerals, right, are felsic. Uh, some, by, some mica is mafic. This is definitely mafic. And like you can see, the granite itself is mostly felsic minerals with a couple of mafic ones. When we talk about the eruption style, the composition is a key element of that as well, because stickier, more explosive lavas are formed by the felsic minerals because of the polymerization, because the silicate tetrahedra stick together that makes the lava stickier it can hold back more of an explosive force until it finally breaks, so that when those eruptions do happen, they can be catastrophic. Felsic tends to be most prevalent on continents. It's gonna make up continental crust. Mafic rocks, dark colored, low in silica, iron and iron and magnesium, which is why they're dark colored. Minerals like olivine, augite, a type of pyroxene, and then calcium feldspar, which is sometimes white, but can get very dark gray in some of these mafic rocks, right? This is felsic, but for the most part, it's mafic minerals. These lavas are runnier and less explosive, again, because the silica in these minerals is less polymerized because they stick together a little less than when they erupt, they're runnier. This makes up oceanic crust. And then intermediate rocks are somewhere in between on all of these. There are not intermediate minerals, there are felsic or mafic minerals, but intermediate rocks have a combination of both. And as a result, they have in-between properties on all the other ones. These eruptions are still pretty explosive though. Let's think about some of the settings where we might find these compositions. So deep within Earth, we had mentioned the mantle and the crust have different compositions, but only slightly. They're both silicates. This mantle is ultramafic. There's basically no felsic minerals at all down there. But as we'll talk about, if you melt only part of it, it tends to be the more felsic stuff that melts a little easier, so that the melting of the mantle produce, the partial melting, I should say, produces basaltic or mafic materials. So at a divergent boundary where these things are separating and the upper mantle partially melts and recrystallizes at Earth's surface, it's going to form basalts, it's going to form gabbros at that divergent boundary. At hot spots, a similar thing happens because it's partially fed by mantle material. It also does affect what's in the crust here, and sometimes it partially melts that crust as well. But for the most part, it's this partial melting of ultramafic material producing more basalt. So these both produce basalt 
And if it's underground, it's Gabbro. What about if an oceanic plate subducts under an oceanic plate? Well, you think, oh, this is mostly mafic, this is mostly mafic. So we expect a lot of what forms here to be mafic. But that partial melting is still going to work in the favor of melting more felsic stuff a little bit easier. And as a result, these island arcs can sometimes be intermediate composition because that felsic stuff gets melted and then sent to the surface. Lastly, continental plate subduction. That's where you can have a whole mixture of things. Mafic, felsic, intermediate, all form because you're mixing the oceanic and the continental crust here. If just this magma came up, it would probably be mostly mafic. But then because you're partially melting that material, it might turn a little intermediate. And because you're mixing with continental crust that itself is already a little felsic, you might end up forming felsic rocks as well. So really all types of rocks can form at continental plate subduction boundaries, continental ocean boundaries, whereas these other types are a little more limited. These other plate tectonic settings produce slightly different rocks and a less uh, wide example of them. Let's remind you about what polymerization looks like. So in something like basalt, where the tetrahedra are not connected to one another, this is probably olivine, They're very weakly polymerized. They don't stick together, and so they're runny because these tetrahedra and these ions in a melt can move past each other. Whereas in rhyolite, these tetrahedra are joined at most of their corners. There's less iron and magnesium. There's more silica. That silica ends up being more polymerized, and you end up with very thick sticky, what we call viscous material. Remember, we've talked about polymerization before. And if you saw my videos on each individual mineral, you saw how each of those silicate minerals are polymerized. And you saw their polymerization structures. But the mafic ones are less polymerized. The felsic ones are more. And you see a list of all of them here, right? These are all of our eight examples. Olivine, pyroxenes like augite, amphiboles like hornblende. Both of our types of micas are plagioclase feldspar, also Na spar. It's got sodium in it. Orthoclase feldspar, also known as potassium feldspar because of the K, and quartz. Those are our eight minerals. And we can see here how each of them is linked together. If you want to know what their formulas are, their chemical formulas, and I don't really like to test on anything more complicated than quartz in here, you can see some of them here if you're interested. So let's see what you remember from what we talked about in terms of the igneous rocks forming at plate tectonic boundaries, which we learned about in an earlier lecture. So at a divergent margin, what type of igneous rock would you expect to find? Remember that it's at the surface. The surface, this is extrusive. Divergent margin, most of what's happening is partial melting of the mantle, so it's probably just mafic material. What's the extrusive mafic rock? Basalt. Coming out of volcanoes at an ocean continent convergent boundary. This is extrusive. What came out at an ocean continent convergent boundary? Could have been anything, right? There were mafics, there were intermediates, there were felsics. So this could be basalt, could be rhyolite, or it could be andesite, depending on a lot of other complicated factors. Now, what about forming in deep magma chambers at these same spots? Well, it must be the intrusive version if it's deep. So what are the intrusive versions of each of these? Basalt's intrusive version was gabbro. Rhyolites was granite. Andesites was diorite. 